Welcome to another video from DIY Daily. Just got a full step-by-step -step guide tonight showing you how to fit a new timing belt and water pump on this 2014 Fiat 500. Now I can use this same guide for fitting the timing belt and water pump on the foot, the, the later shape Ford KA as well, so that's got the same engine in it. Um, just before we get into the video, I'll just show you we've got a full gates kit, comes with a belt in it, new tensioner, and the water pump as well so runs on the water pumps it's always advisable to fit a water pump while you're doing it and uh, we've got a timing belt kit as well uh, if you check out the links in the description below i'll put links to the kit where you can get them from and also the timing pin kit as well now the main thing we're going to be using out of this kit tonight is just this little tool here it's, which is just for putting the tension on the tension of that so just the little prongs are quite handy because they're a bit tricky to do without it just fits in them two little holes there so yeah, but we are basically going to be paint marking the pulleys tonight. If I thought the timing was out, or if, it, if the belt had snapped or anything like that, I'd have to lock it off properly, which would use this bit there. This goes on the back of the camshaft, you had to take the rock cover off to do that. And this piece locks the crankshaft there. Uh, but really, we're just going to be paint marking it tonight. Just makes it loads simpler to do, saves taking all the rocker cover off and everything. So, okay, but quite a straightforward job to do, run you through everything a step at a time. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, just click on the red subscribe button below. There's loads of other videos, a lot of time and belt videos you might want to check out as well. Um, but just for now, a few little bits are stripped down just because we've been doing a few little bits on this one already today. Um, but basically the only things that are off to do the cam belt is just the wheels off ready. And there's a section of arch liner, which is just this piece here that's out of the way. And just this little bracket there, that's all. It just bolts from the top to the bottom. So The first thing we're going to be doing is yours might have a different setup to this sometimes they have a an automatic tensioner if it's as if it's got air conditioning as well this basically has just got just an alternator running on it so what all i'm going to do to start with just to get the alternator belt off is just slack them you've got 16 mil there you've got 17 mil nut just there you might need to just get on the bolt on the back and then just one just behind the belt there at the bottom so if you're just slacking all them off should be able to just that'll, that'll loosen the alternator so we can get the belt off just for speed if you want you can just simply undo these 330 and take the pulley straight off but i need to um obviously once we're putting it back together we're going to need to adjust it up and put some tension on the belt so it's got to be slackened off at some point so so we'll just do that quick now i'll just explain as well just at this stage it's worth just noting basically the crankshaft sensors here and it actually picks up on the on this toothed gear on the actual crank pulley itself so this has got to go back in exactly the same place otherwise it won't start you can't really get it wrong but obviously you just need to know what when you take it off there's a little locating peg there on the crankshaft and it basically locates on that so you, you can't really get it wrong but if you don't know about it you could just try and put it in the wrong place over the top of it so um, but for now we'll just get that alternator slackened off get the belt off and then just run you on to the next step after that That's the on that belt off there. The way to check it, just sort of pull it inside out. And if you just sort of squeeze it up, you can see that's quite badly cracked and perished there, really. That wants one, that wants one uh, fitting on it, so just put that aside for now. And just really quick, you can see with the alternator slack, you can just simply just move it in and out. So you need to slacken them all off just enough so that you can move it, that's all. Awesome. The next thing now, just going to undo these three thirteens and just remove the crank pulley. And just so you know that we've got it off, the little hole just on there, you clearly see, just against there where that lines up with on that side. 
this is one of the timing marks there that we're going to be using we're just going to be lining that up to uh i think it's on this edge just there so we'll get around to that in a minute once we've uh once we've got it down and got the rest of the covers off the only thing i'm going to do just while i'm up here now once i've dropped it down a bit i'm going to have to put the jack underneath the bottom of the sump and um, once I've done that and took the engine mounting off, I'm gonna to have to work from sort of a level at the ground. So just for ease now, I'm just gonna take out this 10 mil bolt there to see if there's any others that I can reach just for the cover. I'll just get them out. So just now, just put a jack underneath the sump, just with a little bit of wood there, just so it's not, just so it's not metal on the metal, and just give it a light pump, just enough to sort of start taking the load off here. The next thing we're going to do is undo this engine mount and get this out of the way. Obviously, when I undo them, I don't want it to just drop down all of a sudden. So now we've just took the load of the engine. We're just going to undo, obviously, these six mounts on the top. Get this section of the mounting off. And then this mounting underneath, I'm gonna get the cover off as well. And then the mounting underneath, it's got some bolts that just go, I think there's four in that one, that just go horizontally into the into the head there. So we're gonna get that off as well. I'm just gonna want a 15 mil socket for the three on the top there, 17 mil for the three on the outside there. I've just got a 10 mil socket and all the 10 mils on the top case in there. And you've just got one more bolt just hidden behind your cover there for the casing. That's the bottom section of the cover off as well. You just have a sort of, the, the, I think it's a crank sensor wiring, just clips into the case in there, you just have to pull that out as you pull the cover off, that's all. Same in the top cover as well. I'm just going to get, use 15 mil shallow socket now, just to get the horizontal bolts out the side bracket there. Yeah, that's the bracket out of the way. Four bolts in there. Needed to get the sort of shallow socket on it with a bit of an angled ratchet. They're a little bit fiddly. They are a bit tight to just crack off. Can be a little bit fiddly, but if you get it jacked up, obviously now that we're on the jack, we can just jack it up as high as it'll go. And it just gives you enough room just to wiggle the bolts out. Right, so now that everything's out of the way, you can see the cam belt quite clearly. It's quite hard to see it on the camera. Can't quite focus on it enough, but Looking at it closely, there's loads of little cracks in there. And once the belt's off, if you pinch it up, you'll see them cracks open up quite badly. So this is the original belt, uh, so it's well ready for changing. All we're going to do now is just put it into the, line the timing marks up at the bottom. Now, as I said before, the correct way to time the camshaft up is to lock it on the back of the actual camshaft itself, which involves taking the um, rock cover and everything off. So. Really, it should be at TDC. All I'm going to do is just set the crankshaft into the right position, and I'm just going to paint mark the camshaft. So I'm just showing the, on the crankshaft. That's uh, what we said there earlier on was the, the line that we're going to use for mark for lining that up. And then just above, you just go above the uh, pulley there. You can just see it. It doesn't stand out very clearly on the camera, but you can just see a little line there that is sort of on the casting. And that's actually what that like what you will be lining that up with so when that's in line that's where the actual locking tool will fit as well so um, but all i'm going to do is just put a 15 mil socket on the ratchet I'm just going to turn it over you always want to be turning an engine the clockwise direction you don't really want to be turning it backwards you always want to only be turned the, the way that it would normally run so so i'm just going to turn that round now until that hits in that and it lines up bang on that mark there A 
just so they go with the tool and actually where the tool actually lines up bang on with the actual uh, hole there is actually slightly just past that mark so it doesn't really matter because we're only just paint marking it anyway so i'm not going to use that as a reference all i'm going to do is just paint mark this and just paint mark just behind that there and then i'm just simply going to paint mark the camshaft here as well now you get two full rotations of the crankshaft to one of the camshaft so normally if this if this actually had like a line a mark on it you could find that if you'd lined your crankshaft up your camshaft actually might be 180 degrees out and um, but so it doesn't really matter tonight because all we're doing is just simply paint marking it so what i'm going to do now is just use a little white marker i'm just going to put a little line on somewhere at one of these on the top there that i can just look at nice and straight and just line it up with something behind it and then i'm also just going to just as a little nice guide just going to get just a bit like a bit of flat metal I can just sit against there and just hold it against there and then I'm just going to put a paint mark on the tooth there that it lines up with. It's just a nice sort of reference so you can just get it absolutely bang on. So it might not move too much, the pulleys as we're putting the belt on anyway, but um, you always want your mark there so you know you're getting it bang on back in the same place. So we'll just put a paint mark on both of them pulleys now and then we'll uh, slacken, the, slacken the tension of the bolt off and get the belt off. So just put a paint mark on the top there, just as a guide, and then you can just see that one there just lines up on that tooth there with the sort of full width for this piece of metal there. And basically I'm just pushing that up flat just on the bottom of there. So that one's done. I've just used a red marker on the crankshaft here, just the white one didn't stand out so well. And just basically line that up and just put a paint mark at the bottom there as well. And just put another quick mark there, just in there. So. Just need to be careful not too bad but we're going to be taking the water pump off tonight we're we'll washing it down with a rear brake cleaner and if you're not careful uh, you can end up taking some of the marks off a brake cleaner so that's why i just put a couple on so the next thing we're going to do now is just undo this tensioner knot just slacken that off and we'll be able to take the belt off then get that out of the way Tensioner out the way. I'm going to slip the belt on. If you look at the belt now, you see what I mean with them sort of cracks in it. As you pinch it up, you can see it's quite bad, badly perished and ready for replacing. So, just about to see the original markings on there, but this original Fiat markings from the Fiat belt there. So, and now the belt's off. Next thing we're going to do. Is just take the water pump off the water pump's held on i think it's just four 10 mil bolts it's just going to undo all them and just take the water pump off i don't know if it might be a little bit tight might just have to pry it off lightly once we've undone them and i think they're just sealed on yeah it is you can see a bit of the the sealer behind it there so it might take a little bit just to pry that off once we've got all the bolts undone uh, but obviously before we drop that off we're just going to put like a catch tank underneath it just to uh, catch all the antifreeze as well there are a few different ways you could take the clip off the radiator and drop some of the water down first but i'm simply just going to drop the water pump straight off and just catch any antifreeze so, so we'll just get out of the way now when we're getting everything back together we'll just put all the torque settings run you through all the torque settings as well You got three bolts and a nut on the bottom for the pump. Yeah, that's the pump out of the way. It was quite tight, it's got a good bite on it without silicon on there, so just see all the silicon around where the pump seated as well so just gonna have to spend a bit of time now just gonna use like a, a flat just razor blade just to run around you gotta be careful you don't want to score the metal but if you can just run it around gently it's the sort of thing i find best to get the bulk of it off and then might just use a bit of emery cloth um just to get out a bit of a clean up so i'll just do that now 
Uh, so now I've got all that cleaned up. I didn't film all that because it was a bit tricky to do and you couldn't really see it on the camera. Uh, but basically I just used a, just a little bit of a razor blade there. Just got the bulk off of that and just use a bit of emery cloth just to get the rest of it off. So it takes a little bit of time, but it's worth just spending the time just cleaning it up well. So what we're gonna do now, just got a new water pump ready to fit. Just gonna run a bead of sealer. And just see there's a little cut out ridge to run it in so it's got seats in it as well. Just gonna run a bead of sealer all the way around the outside of the water pump there. I'm just gonna put it in, just run the bolts up by hand. Then I'm gonna torque them down. The torque setting, officially it says eight to 10 Newton meters. I'm just gonna do all four bolts to 10 Newton meters. Uh, if you're not using the torque wrench, 10 Newton meters isn't a lot. It's quite a light nip really. So, uh, but we'll just get that done now and get that back in. Then we can wash it down and go on to fitting the belt. So now the water pump's all on, torqued up correctly. I'm just going to wash it down with some brake cleaner. Just give that a quick blow off, just so everything's nice and dry. So you don't really want antifreeze on your belt, as it's a lubricant. It's not really ideal on there, so we're just going to swirl it down a bit. And once we've done that, we've got the new tensioner here. Just going to locate the tensioner just over the hole and just wind the nut on just lightly. We don't want to run it up tight. We want to leave it slack enough so that we can put the tension on the belt when we're ready. So we'll just run that over. So we've now just done the nut up on the tensioner, just enough so that it's still free spinning, but it doesn't take, it only takes about half a turn to lock it off at that. So I'm just going to leave that loose there before we put the belt round. Just got the new timing belt here. Some belts do have them on, some don't. This has got arrows on, so it wants to be running. They won't be running the direction that the engine turns over. If it hasn't got arrows on, sort of guide really is you just want to be fitting it so that the reading's reading in the direction that it's turning over. So some belts have timing marks on this has got some we're not really using them tonight for this engine but some some engines they'll actually line up with marks on the pulleys so all we need to do is make sure now that the two pulleys are bang on in the same place all lined up make sure they haven't moved at all just double check them if they have slightly moved just reline them back up we're just going to loop the belt around now and you need to get it quite tight around the right hand side and leave the slack for the left hand side where the tensioner is obviously the tensioner is there to take up the slack so it does need to be tight between the crank and the cam here around the right hand side of the water pump there so we'll just get that all loop round now Right, so we've got the belt all rooted round now. Didn't go too bad, it's fairly easy that. Um, as I was putting it on, it just sort of pulled the cam pulley just slightly round. So it's, these are easy enough to turn these. I could just turn that just back by hand enough. So, but now that that's on, you can now see that la that lines up bang on where it was. Put my gauge there as well. Um, but look at the crankshaft. The crankshaft's li crankshaft lines bang on, lined up as well. So. And you can see we've got it, it's nice and taut on this side and all the slack is just left here which we're going to take up in a minute with the tension so now we're going to use this tool they are mega handy for these because they're really tiny holes and a bit tricky to do without but that just slots in there and you can just simply turn it in the direction there just to put the tension on and it's just going to be a little bit hard to film this one to show you as i'm tensioning it up but basically what we're looking to do just on the underneath there that section there with the cut out in the middle this piece there at the bottom is just as we tension it up that's going to move across this way 
and we're just looking to line that cut up, cut out, bang on in line behind with that cut out there. So I'll probably have to sort of tension it up with a mirror and then I'll just show you when we've got it in place. And all you've got to do, as you've got it bang on in line, you'll have to hold it dead still and just give this a light nip, just enough to hold it, then I'm going to torque it up correctly. And the correct torque setting says 25 to 31 newton meters, so I'm just going to do it at 30 newton meters. Right, so we've just torqued that up to 30 newton meters. I'll just say it was a bit fiddly trying to get you, trying to sort of show it on the camera. You couldn't really see it, but if you just look there, you can just see that that line is bang on in the middle there. So that's bang on where we want it to be. So that's all tightened up correctly, all uh, tensioned up correctly, sorry. Obviously, once that's done, you just want to double check your marks, make sure everything's bang on there as well. Just got a gauge across there. Just see that's bang on in line. Same again with the crankshaft as well. Okay, so we're all happy with that. Next thing we're going to do, you don't have to do this, but it's always worthwhile doing really. I always do it every time. You just want to, um, now that that's tensioned up, basically we're just going to put the ratchet on the bottom on the crank again. And we're going to do two full rotations of the crankshaft and just make sure that everything lines back up. As long as everything lines back up okay, we're good to go. If there's any, if there's an issue and it's slightly out of that, basically we're just going to back the tensioner off again, adjust it take the belt off adjust it again and just reset it so that's basically the cam belt change done i'm just going to spin it over now just check that and then we'll just run you through any torque settings when put i sort of fly through the video a bit when i'm putting it back together and um, run you through any torque settings and just run you through blading it up as well at the end well so just doing a couple of rotations See the, uh, the crankshaft, the camshaft sorry, is lined up. Just check the quick mark there, but I've just put my peg across there as well. And the crankshaft is bang on in line as well. So at this stage now, we're just basically gonna, I'll just sort of fly, fly through it, putting everything back together. But I'll just rebuild it exactly as we took it off. The only thing you can sort of do at this stage, which just helps a little bit, is you can just top your coolant up. And then while you're building it all up, it just gives it chance just to, um, to sort of get through the system a little bit that's all so we'll just get everything start rebuilding everything now
And as the casing's all nipped up now, just ready to fit the crank pulley. Just as I said earlier on, you just want to line up the little noggin on there with your, with your little hole on the crank pulley there, just to make sure that your crank sensor picks up and reads correctly on your pulley. Now the correct, the correct um, torque setting for the crank pulley bolts is 20, it says 23 to 28 newton meters. Um, but I'm sort of fairly confident with the buzz gun, so I'm just going to do it with that. But basically, I do want to be doing them mega tight. They're only 30 mil bolts, so I'll just nip that out now. So crank pulley's nipped up now. I'm just going to drop it down. Now, I wouldn't usually build this stage up when doing a camber. I always like to just leave this off just while I run it up. And I'll leave it running with the cover off just so you can have a good look at everything. Just make sure your water pump's sealed up and not leaking or anything. So, um, Also, I'm actually going to run it up tonight without putting the alternator belt on it. I'm going to have to order an alternator belt because I ain't got one. So, but basically, all they would all they'll do different here is put the alternator belt on just simply route it round you basically need to use a pry bar to pry the alternator can't move that from down here but just to pry that to put the tension on the auxiliary belt you don't want to be mega tight a bit of a gauge is so that you can grab the belt and you want to be able to twist it sort of like a half turn so um, obviously i'll have to do that I'll do that tomorrow so but just for tonight to finish the video we'll run it up now without that belt on Yeah, just dropped it back down now. Everything's built back up. Now I've just had a quick look. Um, there is, I didn't know if there was a bleed screw or not on these, but there is one. I've just set the coolant level. Uh, if you just sort of use a torch, shine it in the bowl, you can uh, you can sort of see the, see the level a bit there. So just blow the, the max out at the minute. Now these have actually got a bleed screw on them. Basically in this pipe just there, all you need to do is just crack that off. Actually just do that one by hand. Sometimes you get a little bit tight. If you just basically crack that off and undo it, you'll hear some hissing while the coolant comes through. Leave that out until the coolant, just neat coolant, starts running through. You might need to just top your antifreeze up as you're doing it. Just taking a little while, so I'm just going to top the antifreeze up there at the same time. So just nip that up now. Just want a hand nip. Didn't want to be too tight, so it's only little plastic threads. Uh, basically, to get it to come out, I did have to just top the coolant level up higher than obviously the sort of level of that there. And all that does is that allows it to force the air out of the, of the bleed screw there. So you might find that your level ends up being a little bit high. So you might just need to suck a little bit out when we're done. But what we're going to do now is we'll just strike it up and we'll leave it running. With a cap off just that just helps get a little bit of air out as well if there's any left in the system but we'll leave it running for about 10-15 minutes with the cap off then we'll put the cap on but while it's running and um, we'll leave the heater on full heat and full blow as well and make sure that the hot air starts coming through the fans that's another way if you don't get any hot air through your vents there's an airlock in the system so that'll need to be so the air will need to be got out to sort that out and then once it's gone cold you just want to set your level from there so just for now we're going to strike it up when you strike it up just get ready to have a quick look and just have a listen just make sure everything sounds okay obviously i'm doing it without the alternator belt on so i might find that the the alternator belts on the, the uh, battery lights on the dash on this one obviously i'd normally just put that all back together but i'm gonna to have to order a belt so just strike it up quick. That's him. Just see that just struck straight up nicely. Just have a quick look. Obviously, normally with the alternator belt on there, I'd just be checking, just making sure the alternator belt looks like it's running through. Um, but yeah, that's the basic cam belt change all done now. So, as I said, just, I'll just leave it running while I run through the bleeding procedure for the uh, cooling system there. Uh, but this one's got to stay on the ramp because there's a few more bits to do on it as well. But I thought I'd put the video together, see if it helps anyone having a go at there. So, but yeah, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.